Welcome. I'm Debbie Drow, your Penfield Town Supervisor. Uh, thank you all for coming tonight. Um, I just want to give you a little brief background on our community choice aggregation. Um, in this past August, the Penfield Town Board approved a contract to renew the town's community choice aggregation program, which is known as CCA. Our program administrator will remain good energy and Constellation New Energy was, will be continuing to serve as our energy supplier. As part of this renewal, a new fixed rate has been established. New rates will go into effect for the De December billing cycle. Much like the previous program, Penfields Green, which is the default product, offers residents 50% renewable electricity, while Penfield 100 offers 100% renewable le electricity. New rates, due to the increasing energy prices over the past few years, uh, the fixed rate price has increased. The new rates for this program, it will not change for the duration of the renewal of this program, which lasts for two years. So I'm gonna let Good Energy um, uh, talk about this um, later. And residents that are currently in the CCA program are automatically enrolled <laughs> in the program per New York State law. However, residents can opt out of the program at any time. And if you previously opted out, no action is needed and you will remain opted out of the program. At this time, I'd like to do, introduce some fo um, folks here tonight. We have Sarah Waterman from the town of Penfield. She's sitting at the, dais uh, at the uh, table over there. She's our town sustainability engineer. And also behind me here is John Berg from Good Energy, who will lead, lead tonight's community choice aggregation information session. So I hope you all um, get, learn some, um, and I'm looking forward to learning some more information about how we, for our good energy for our, our town supplier. And um, with that, I will inter uh, take it away and let John um, talk to you. I You're welcome. That. Yeah, I want to thank Debbie, uh, the council, the, the board, uh, Sarah, uh, Mark, Valentine, right? and uh, all those that uh, helped facilitate the original program and, of course, the removal of the program. Uh, I see a Bills fan here, so today's a much better day than it was a week ago. Great game last night. Uh, that was good to see. Uh, where, where do I point this? this way? If you just click, it should it work. Should just work. Okay, cool. So John Berg, uh, Good Energy. Uh, we launched a program um, a couple of years ago with the help of the town board, um, originally Supervisor LaFontaine, uh, Sarah and her team. And it was, it was called Community Choice Aggregation. Um, it is a program that is offered by the state of New York, Department of Public Service. I should say offered, but mandated, right? So they have guidelines in place that allow these types of programs. Uh, we'll go through how it impacted your energy bill over the last couple of years and how it might impact your energy bill going forward. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the existing program performance. The existing program ends in December of 2023. Uh, and of course, we renewed it for another two years. Um, how can you opt out? Any questions that you might have? Um, and then we can open it up for questions and answers uh, to folks here uh, and online and on the phone. So Good Energy, we are a CCA administrator approved by the state of New York. Um, we manage the, what we call the RFP process in selecting a supplier um, to serve the community. Um, these are opt-out programs that are under the auspices and the oversights of the Department of Public Service or Public Service Commission. Uh, we handle outreach, community education, sessions like this and any ongoing concerns that communities um, and customers like yourselves might have. Um, ongoing support, any kind of billing questions that folks have, we can handle that. And of course, the renewal of any programs, which we did just renew the program for December 23 start for two years. Um, community Choice is really offered, again, uh, by the state of New York as a program where communities can get the leverage or the buying power from the entire residential community um, in their community, as well as the small commercial accounts like retail storefronts, uh, uh, those types, not large commercial industrial accounts, but the smaller uh, commercial accounts at the same time. Uh, so we go out in bulk. Uh, we do buy, in this case, it's an electricity program, not natural gas, although we can do natural gas and we might consider that moving forward. Um, so again, you leverage the community of the entire population. We do fixed price contracts. So it's a fixed price, not a variable. Uh, the rates in the state of New York really for all of the investor-owned utilities, which would be, you know, rg and &E, National Grid, NYSEG, all the way down into Con Edison and then Long Island are variable rates. So the rate that you receive from the utility 
is actually a variable market-based rate. We offer fixed price programs that create budget stability, in certain cases savings, uh, depending on when you buy and how the market behaves over time. The benefits are, you know, you get the, the supplier charges on your utility bills. You don't get two bills, you get one. Um, you get the same quality of service from the utility. The utility still services your wires um, and the delivery of the energy to your home. Um, there are some community solar options that are available in the marketplace. And again, to the extent that we can create savings or opportunities in the future, we can consider natural gas opportunities as well. This would be, again, just for the small residential SC1 rate class accounts, uh, small commercial SC2s, which is really your kind of small retail, like storefronts and accounts of that nature. Uh, those are the eligible accounts. The ineligible accounts are those that are blocked. So for instance, if you blocked your account and it can't be switched to a supplier, it won't be eligible for the program. Anybody that's on a low to moderate income LMI, what we call EAP, energy assistance programs, at this point are not eligible uh, for the program. Anybody that's on a third party supply contract already with a supplier or an ESCO uh, has the option to get into the program, but we can't uh, facilitate that you know, through the initial uh, enrollments within the program. You can do that at, at any point during the program between the first meet read uh, of the program and the end of the, uh, the term. Anybody that has opted out would not be included in the program moving forward as well. You could opt back in, but we would not just sweep those accounts and include you unless you so chose. How it will impact your energy bill? Well, there's two components to your bill. Um, the two major cost components are delivery and supply. We would really only affect the supply portions of your bill, so the delivery would still remain the same. That would be coming through our GE. Um, we would switch out the supply portions of your costs, uh, which we did with the existing program, and presumably uh, overlay some renewable energy component inside of that and the potential or advent of savings over time. Um, or lack thereof, depending on the market conditions um, and the prevailing rates from the utility rg and &E in this case. Uh, your delivery component will not change. So even though there's two major components, your supply component will change, right? So rg &E will not provide that supply component and those costs the program would, and the program uh, supplier in this case would be Constellation New Energy. It's the same supplier that currently uh, provides the program, and the delivery, again, will, will not uh, change. That would be through rg and &E. And again, no change in service, which is really important. So any you know, concerns that you have with blackouts, brownouts, um, you know, utility fa failures, wire problems, the utility will come out rg &E and and handle that as they did uh, in the past. So no change in that service, which is great. So we'll talk about the current program a little bit. So the current program, uh, which started in December of 2021 and goes through December of 2023, so it's not completed yet, uh, but we're, we're getting very close. The cumulative savings per household, and again, this is just on average, each household varies a little bit uh, from house to house, depending on your usage and your profile, saved about $150 on average, and that's probably around through, say, 18 months of the program. So there's a few months left to be uh, calculating that, but pretty good savings. What ended up happening in 2022 was the market went extremely high. Um, and again, rg &E and other util utility, investor-owned utilities in the state of New York only offer a market-based variable rate to consumers like yourselves. The program had a fixed rate. Um, due to some geopolitical events with the Ukraine uh, situation last year and some export uh, with LNG and domestic supply issues, the market went up really high in 2022. So that really, that really boded well for the program. So there was good savings for each household. And of course, cumulatively, Penfield as a whole saved over a million dollars. So if you aggregate all the residential uh, accounts together plus the small commercial, the program yielded over a million dollars in about an 18 month period. Uh, from a renewable perspective, which is really the driver, um, the driving uh, motivator, I think, to launch the program on the onset back in 2021. And I think it was all the way back to 2020 when you initiated the, uh, the bid process for an administrator like Good Energy. Um, we didn't get the program off the ground until 2021, um, but it's the equivalent of renewable offsets to remove 6,400 passenger vehicles from use for one year. So basically there was enough renewable content in the program at the 50% Penfield Green, which is the default product that we chose, um, equivalent to removing 6,400 vehicles off the road. So pretty, pretty good result from the emissions perspective. And again, it is a fixed rate, so you have some budget certainty. 
uh, versus the utility, which is a variable uh, price to compare. Uh, Two-year term expiring in December 23, so the existing program comes to an end in a couple months, and of course we renewed it for two years. So this is the new program rate, uh, the Penfield Green, which is the exact same product that we chose back in 2021. It's 50% renewable energy, predominantly comes from a composition of hydro, so hydro plants in the state of New York, um, and some wind. So it's a composition of I'd probably say about 65% hydro, 35% wind, and it's all in-state New York, right, which is required by the DPS to fulfill the requirements of a program um, of, this, of this type, CCA in New York. So the new rate's going to be just under $0.10 cents a kilowatt hour, uh, which is pretty much higher than what we're, what we're seeing in the marketplace today and the original program rate. However, the market's been super volatile. Um, and the green component of energy has gone up as well over the last two years. So the market conditions in 2023 were much different than they were in 2020, 2021. If you wanted to opt up and get 100% renewable, you can do that at 10.849 cents per kilowatt hour. So basically you're paying up to get the 100% renewable uh, option for the program. So by default, if you take no action and you remain in the program, you'll get the 50% green at just under 10 cents per kilowatt hour. So it is a two-year term again. Um, so the program will run from December of 23 to December of 25. Um, and I'll reiterate it again here. We'll probably touch upon it again um, you know, in, in some subsequent slides. You know, the past performance of the program certainly doesn't guarantee future performance. That's kind of like a statement that you'd see in like the stock market or mutual funds, but certainly true. Um, just because we saved money or saved co energy costs over the last two years doesn't necessarily mean it's going to replicate that moving forward, but we're optimistic that the program was done at a very optimal point in the marketplace, and again, it does have that 50% green content, which is important. So currently, the 12-month historical RG&E price to compare is 6.83 cents, and you can see for comparative purposes, 6.83 versus 9.6. Just keep in mind the 9.6 cents, the new program rate moving forward, has the 50% green. Uh, the utility price at 6.83 is a 12-month historical backcast of the utility rates. <clears throat> Why are the prices so much higher now today? I mean, frankly, it's really where the market is, right? So the supply rates moving forward over the next couple of years are much, much higher than they were back in 2020, 2021. And then the renewable content is a lot more expensive in the state of New York. So the combination of the market prices and purchasing in-state New York hydro and wind is where you're seeing the increase in the energy costs um, in the program rates. So how to enroll, really there's no need to sign up, right? So if you're in the program and you take no action, you'll stay in the program. If you're currently not in the program, either the current program, which expires in December of 23, or the next two years of the renewal program, you can opt back into the program at any point in time. So really the benefit of these types of programs, a lot of folks will say, geez, you know, it looks like the market prices for the program moving forward are higher than what the current rates are from rg and &E. And that's true. But you have the luxury, it's really an option, right? It's a free option. So that over the next two years, you can go into the program without any costs, and you can remove yourself from the program without any penalties, right, over the next two years. So it's a free option for the marketplace, and it gives flexibility. And it gives that budget certainty that you can't get from the utility. We will be sending out opt-out letters. So at the end of September, we'll send out an opt-out. There's going to be a 30-day opt-out period like it was back in 2021. That will expire probably November 1st. Um, at that point, you have the option to opt out. Um, if you don't opt out, just to be clear, you can opt out at any point in time. So if you missed the window to opt out before December, you can opt out at any point in time, any month subsequently uh, in the program. And again, you can opt back in. So it's got a lot of flexibility. Um, again, 30 days to opt out. Uh, you will get that opt-out letter. It's going to be, again, on the same utility bill. So you won't get two bills. You'll get one bill. <clears throat> um, and again, no cost. You can opt out and you can opt back in. So it gives a lot of flexibility for the program and for the residential customers and small business customers alike.
So if you want to opt out, you're going to get the opt out letter. You'll just receive that letter at each of your residencies, um, whatever your billing address is for your account. Um, you have the option to opt out using that letter. You can go on to the program website, which is penfieldcca.com. At any point in time, there's pages, landing pages there. It will help you opt out as well as opt in if you want to. And you can opt into the 100% green at that point as well. All right, the three methods to opt out. You can return the self-addressed postcard with the opt out letter. It's pretty simple. You just fill it out, send it back, uh, postage free, and you can opt out. You can visit the website. There's a form, uh, and again, you can opt out or in either way um, through, the po uh, through the website, penfieldcca.com. And then there's a number to uh, the supplier constellation, 833-942-3023. That would be direct to Constellation Energy, Constellation New Energy, that will be the supplier of the program. They will opt you out or in um, at your discretion. Um, and then we have a number uh, that's directly to Good Energy. We man it 24-7. Uh, if you don't get a live person, it automatically reroutes through Ring Central, and we have a team that handles it. Um, and we will respond within 24 hours or same day, and that's 585. We actually created a number two years ago uh, specific for the, uh, the Penfield area, 585-310-0236. You could visit the website. Um, and I don't want to direct folks to Sarah, but certainly sure. she fills some calls and we're a team. So I'll start with any would questions? you well, I'll yeah. start with would you go back one slide so sure. that yeah. if anyone wants to write down those numbers, <laughs> they can. Yeah. Um, so because I have my microphone here, I'll continue sitting here. But if you have questions, um, maybe you can raise your hand and we'll start having people come up. If any come through PCTV, I'll kind of stagger you. So just don't be alarmed if I'm not taking an audience member. It means I have someone else. I believe this gentleman on the end raised his hand first. Oh, yeah, I was just having trouble hearing. Oh, I'm so sorry. If you have questions, um, I'll have you raise your hands. Sorry. If you have questions, I'll have you raise your hands. And I'll stagger between PCTV questions that may come in through phone or email and the audience members, just so you're not surprised if I'm taking questions from this side at that point. Um, if you have questions, would you mind raising your hands? The gentleman on the end, um, feel free to come up to the microphone so everyone can hear you, as I could have done. <laughs> So I'm uh, concerned about the uh, rate increase. Uh, sure. Uh, my quick calculation on this is it looks like it's gone up 68% from last year. Um, that uh, Yeah, so, it, there, so five, seven. Oh, no worries. I can hear. Yeah. Oh, actually, I don't know if yeah. it's coming through. Sounds like it's coming through. Hello. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Debbie. Sorry. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. correct. I don't know if it's exactly 68%, but I assume your math's correct, right? So it went from 5.733 right. cents yeah. to uh, 9665. Right. And that's a combination of the market differences between 2020 and 2021, which yeah. were much lower than they are today. Okay. Um, and the green content has gone up almost double, right? So the okay. cost of that is really yeah. what's weighting the prices higher. Right. Um, keep in mind, however, that Right now, the RG&E rates are variable rates, so we don't know. We don't really know what's going to happen yeah. in 2024, 2025, right? Right. So, you know, kind of the, I don't want to call it like, you know, a bet, but basically, if you look at what we did in 2021, the market really increased over that two-year period, and there was a lot of value for the program. Yeah. Now, I'm not suggesting that exact result is going to occur over the next two years, but that's right. really the kind of decision-making process is to hedge, you know, where the market's today. Right. On the advent of the market goes higher, both the green component and the regular yeah. power goes okay. higher over two years. Well, the green component, I, I'm c concerned about that as well because uh, uh, the 50% uh, green uh, yeah. uh, compared to the 100%, it's only a penny more for the 100%. So Correct. that seems to suggest that the green component is really a minor part of the total cost. Well, actually, I, don't, I wouldn't necessarily say that. It's actually pretty high. Um, let's go back. It's actually 1.2 cents. So it's, it's about two and a half cents for 100% green, uh -huh. about 1.25 cents for the 50% green. Right. So I think your math is pretty close. Yeah. Um, I just want to pull the numbers up again. Yeah. There we go, right here. But it would suggest so that- So you can see, yeah, there's a 1.2 cent difference between the 50% yeah. and the 100%, so exactly right. correct. Yeah. 
Uh, so if, yeah, if it's just a, <clears throat> a, a penny more for 50%, uh, then it would suggest that the vast majority of the increase of price is not from the green, it's from general energy costs going up. Absolutely. So I mean, right. what I would say is just my recollection of what was in the green component back in 2021 was about 1.5 cents total uh -huh. for 100% for green. So it was about three quarters of a penny for the 50%. Yep. So you can see the greens increase, but that's not the right. largest movement in the price, right? right. So yep. the, really the largest movement is just market-based prices overall. Right. Um, right. What we saw last year and the increases in the prices last year were really born out of you know, the geopolitical events that occurred between Russia yeah. and Ukraine. Mm -hmm. um, our administration withheld gas supply both domestically because they were shipping it over to our allies, and then we had no winter, right? So right. it was supposed to be the coldest winter on record, turned out to be the warmest winter on record. So a lot of gas in the ground, prices are pretty cheap. Yeah. The great news is though, the program really yielded value, right? Both yeah. from the green perspective and the yeah. economic perspective yeah. over the last two years or 18 months, 19 months. Um, Again, we can't necessarily say that that's going to repeat itself moving forward. But the great thing about these programs is it creates optionality. You can opt out. You yep. can opt in. You can opt out. You just got to pay attention, right? So right. it's really incumbent on us to provide the right level of outreach, make sure that we update the websites such that that information is relevant, and we do that on a monthly basis to make sure that we post We post actually three numbers from the utility. It's the one-month trailing from our genie, the three-month, and then the 12-month prior right. average. Yeah. So. so how is your rate determined? How do you come up with this fixed rate if the previous 12 months has been 6.8 cents? Yep. You're projecting, in other words, that the rates are going to be higher because you're, you're, you've got to incorporate some risk in this. John, yeah. So, so the utilities rate is what we call like a day ahead settle, right, mm -hmm. or real time. So when you don't hedge something forward, yeah. it just settles to the market. John, mm -hmm. could you please go through the procurement process and yeah, how yeah. we got the quotes too? <clears throat> yeah, so, so how we came up with the price is we go to market to you know, multiple suppliers. Mm -hmm. um, we as an administrator typically only work with the largest, most credible suppliers from a credit perspective, experience perspective. So we went to bid with two of the largest suppliers in the space, Direct Energy and Constellation New Energy, right? Mm -hmm. Constellation is the current and will be the future uh, supplier for the program. So we go to competitive bid, it's released you know, in a public forum. Uh, we open them, they're sealed bids, and we choose really from a capability perspective, these two suppliers is really very little difference, right? They're both one of the most capable suppliers in the marketplace. Yeah. So it really comes down to price, right, and experience. So in this case, Constellation, again, was the lowest bidder, and it's really, really indicative where the market's at. We've seen other programs that went off maybe a couple months prior, and then during the same time period that we were bidding uh, Town of Penfield's loads, were very similar price points at the residential level. So we're pretty confident that it was a really good market level price. Yeah. What you see from, from rg and &E is not a future fixed price, it's a monthly sure. day ahead settle. Yeah. And what we're seeing in the marketplace, say natural gas. Mm -hmm. Forwards for natural gas are up here, but the market on a daily basis is yeah. settling here. So you have a trade off between lower prices and risk and budget certainty. Right. And at some point, they, they cross, right? Mm -hmm. At certain points, you'll see where a market-based rate will just explode. Mm -hmm. Like in Texas recently, over the summer, they had prices that were like, what was that, six cents? Uh, like 100 cents, right? Right, during like a week mm -hmm. in, in, uh, in Texas. So right. it's a trade-off between market-based rates and forward prices. Yeah. And, and to be clear, <clears throat> good energy in the town of Penfield is not, is not predicting the price. We received quotes from these energy suppliers, and the town board chose the lowest quote that came in. Right, right. Yeah. So right. how does this compare with other CCAs in the state right now? Have any renewed and a similar yeah. Yeah. time period, and what is the I price Yeah, so, so City of Rochester renewed, and Henrietta actually didn't renew, but Henrietta is a new program mm -hmm. that was combined at the same time with the City of Rochester, right? So they're not together, but they went out to bid at the same time. And the price points are very similar. Um, their price points were maybe two tenths of a penny lower um, in that regard, okay. but that was just market timing. They got their transaction done in May, and we hedged this off in August, so the first week in August. Okay. So okay. timing differences in the marketplace will have differences in price, yep. uh, but it's very close, very yep. similar. And, and by the way, it was the same supplier. 
So okay. Constellation New Energy picked up both those programs and this program again. I see. And uh, yeah. do you know what the percentage of the, uh, the participation rate has been in Penfield for the CCA? I, exa I know exactly what it is. Um, it's, it's probably around 69%, let's call it 70% yep. participation. Um, unlike what we saw in the city of Rochester, not to spare the program, but their participation rate is less than 50% at this uh -huh. point. Uh -huh. And how about the uh, Penfield 100? Do you know what the participation rate was? For uh, there was 11 participants, uh, to my uh, knowledge. 11 exactly. participants, okay. But yeah. that was actually formally requested by a group of residents that we approach that option so that they would have that. Right, right. And it didn't, there's no added cost to anyone but those residents that are part of it. Right. Um, and then uh, can you uh, describe uh, uh, community solar as an option that can be laid on top of this sure. that people can utilize that as well. Mm -hmm. So, so as we see uh, solar providers come into the marketplace, they'll oftentimes offer discounted rates to residential customers. Mm -hmm. It's really now more geared towards what I call LMI, low to moderate income, which was the EAP uh, type customer class, mm -hmm. the uh, the assistance type uh, mm -hmm. uh, accounts. So most of that load, and it's mandated by NYSERDA in the state of New York, has to go to those LMI type customers. However, oftentimes we'll find there's offers out there where you can get either a 5% or a 10% discount on your entire bill, yep. completely aside from the supply. It's just right. it's a yeah. separate offer. Yeah. Um, and we don't, we don't bundle the two right here for right. this program. Mm -hmm. Other programs have tried to bundle those offerings, right? The community solar with the supply. Yep. It didn't work out so great, so we keep them independent at this point. Okay. And to be clear, at this point, the town of Penfield does not have a community solar option. Uh -huh. yeah. The town may not, but uh, yes. the, the public but does. But an individual uh, so resident so, yes, can go do. out and yeah, get it I, themselves. I've been participating with that. I've been uh, yeah. using the CCA as well as community solar, and then I, I save 10% a month. 10%? Um, That's right. Right. Yeah. Good. Yeah, it's, it's a good program. Yeah. All right, thank you. Oh, no worries. Appreciate it. Thanks um, for the questions. Before we move forward with the, the, the in-person questions, I'm going to take a question online. Mm -hmm. um, Scott Lippa questioned the rate, which mm -hmm. we just answered. Yep. Um, with that, he also asked how much revenue the town of Penfield receives from the CCA program, and I can answer that. The town of Penfield does not make any money on the CCA program. Mm -hmm. The town of Penfield does not pay for any money for the CCA program. It is just an option for electric electricity supply for the residents to choose to be part of or not. Um, and then the last question from him was, what other options besides 50% renewable are available? At this time, the only other option is a 100% renewable option at that higher rate that John presented. The town in the procurement process, well, in the quote process, did request the basic rate. So just the same mix as our g and &E provides to every resident right now. And that came in at more than 15% above the previous 12 month average, which made it so we weren't allowed by the Public Service Commission to offer that rate. So that is why the town went with the 50% renewable and the 100% renewable options. Yeah, and I would say as far as expense to the town, I mean, Really, the only expense to the town is, uh, you know, the kindness of donation of your resources, right? Offering up uh, venues like this and, you know, maybe at the front end of the process, a little bit of legal resources and the RFP uh, process. But other than that, it's, it's nominal expense. Uh, Good Energy really handles all of that expense from an outreach and communication perspective, which we've done over the last couple of years um, and are super excited to do it for the next couple of years as well going forward. And to be clear, also, we do not contract <clears throat> with Good Energy. We have an, an administrator agreement with them. And that's part mm -hmm. of the reason there's not a cost to the town to work with good energy. Um, so yep. that is the online question at this time. I'll take another question from here and then flip online. The lady in the front. Would it be easier if the mic comes to you? Okay. <laughs> yes, much. There you go. Thank you. I have a couple of questions. Um, trying to fully understand this, I'm not sure whether I, whether we opted in your, when you started, and how do I know for that? Okay. So, so you would likely not opt in unless you made a conscious decision to do that, right? So, unless you opted out, you're probably in the program. Um, if you look at your utility bill. Um, there would be, well, it doesn't say here, but there would be two components, major components to your bill, delivery and supply. 
yeah. under that line item of supply on your bill, it would say that you're with Constellation New Energy, right? So that you're with a supplier, mm -hmm. not with RJ &A. So right. it would be clearly marked on the bill. Yeah, and years ago, before Penfield got into this, I went with some company because I'm all about the, you know, um, ecology. But I discovered that the delivery bill was, it kept going up and it was much more money than what I was supposed to be saving. The other thing is I have solar on the house that's been on for years, um, probably at least eight, maybe 10. Um, and I have ridiculously good bills. Yep. So I'm wondering how this would affect me. Sure. Yeah, what I would say is that your usage is much lower probably than the average house, right? Because you have the solar on the roof. Mm -hmm. So your dollar savings would be much lower than the average home, but your percent savings should be very similar, right? So you'll end up getting the benefit of the rate through the program, but just against much lower usage. So because you have the solar on the roof, you're using less energy from the utility, right? Mm -hmm. from, from the program. So you're saying that it would still be an advantage? It would, still, it would be to a be rate advantage to the extent that the rate that we're offering through the program ends up being lower than the utility rate over time. So if you were on the program for the last, say, 18 months to two years, yeah. you would have saved a, a certain percentage, right, whatever that percentage is, but just against a lower usage. So your yeah. dollar savings will be a little bit different than the average household because you have the solar. But the good news is you're saving on the solar. Over the last year and a half, you saved on the program rate, right? So it was yeah. a benefit to you, yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Well. And, and, and you contributed okay. because if you're in the program, you're contributing to the 50% green by default uh, to the community, which, you know, again, had a, a pretty substantial value of eliminating greenhouse gas emissions for the last year and a half. And mm -hmm. if you go home and look at your bill and you're still not sure if you're part of the program, I'll give you my card before you leave and you can call me and I can help you. Thank you. That's great. Um, I have a question on YouTube, so I'll offer that. Mm -hmm. um, what are the rg &E costs per kilowatt hour for the past few months? And I pulled up the, the PenfieldCCA.com mm -hmm. website, which we actually have that information on. And the prior three-month average rg &E price to compare was 5.62 cents per kilowatt hour. Right. And, and the last year was 6.8. Yep. Um, what, what we saw last year was those prices were in the high sevens, eights, nines um, at some point during the year. Uh, but again, moving forward, we don't know because it is a variable rate. So RGE will not provide a fixed price moving forward. It will be variable. Um, and it's something that we'll post on a monthly basis. So you know, we try to keep the metrics up to date uh, by like the first couple days of each month. We'll update those. You'll get the most recent month, the most recent three month average, and then the 12 month average to compare. So hopefully, there's enough information out there that you can make an educated decision whether you want to remain in the program. Uh, and then in the future, if you do uh, opt out, again, you can opt back in. So, you know, if we keep the information fresh, that'll help you make decisions moving forward, um, educated decisions. And that information is on the PenfieldCCA.com website. Um, if there's more questions, we can take another. Um, the gentleman in front. Thank you. Um, I'm just curious, do you know what percentage of RG&E is renewable? Or is it all 0% renewable? For no, no. So, so each utility has the same mandate from, from the state of New York. So each state, New Jersey, New York, they'll have very specific mandates as the mix of technology, right? So there's a mix of solar, biofuel, biomass, wind, mm -hmm. that type of stuff, right? So there's a whole mix to it. Two years ago, it was in that 5 to 6% range, and I think it's trending upwards now of like 13%. So every state okay. starts to increase their requirements. The requirements that we have, so in other words, the coal program 50% renewable, means that we have to purchase 50% on top of what the utility is already embedding inside the, inside the rates, right? So technically, you're a little bit more than 50, 50%. So right, then. exactly. We're just, the, the cost only represents that extra 50%. Yeah, so, so a supplier entire. like a Constellation New Energy, as a mandate, has to have the same mix or percentage of renewables as RGE does, as a standard. Then we have the 50% on top, right? 
So you're probably like 63% at that point renewable. Okay. And if yeah. you're ever curious in the future of what RG&E's base mix is, you can look at their, um, their environmental disclosure on their website. So you just okay. go to the RG&E yeah. website, search environmental disclosure. Okay, great. And you said that there was only 11 people in the Penfield 100? The 100, yeah. yeah I'm one. There you are. <laughs> That's awesome. But, well, thank um, you for your contribution. Um, <laughs> so I, but one of my problems I've had is trying to verify that this is actually occurring on my RG&E bill. So you're yeah. saying that I can show you my bill absolutely. and you can let me know whether or not I'm actually getting what I'm... I'm happy oh, to share that with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah great. And if you want to like take a copy of it and just shoot it over, we'll, we'll take yeah. a look. Send um, in, you can send an email or, or bring it into the town hall. Um, Oh, absolutely. Okay, yes. and, and Constellation actually just recently provided their disclosure for the program. They did. And it shows exactly what plants within the state of New York, like the hydro plants, the wind plants, where the power comes from. So it's kind of a neat feature. So you can actually pinpoint to say these are the assets that are being used. So you know and, that they're green. And it is a requirement in their contract with the town mm -hmm. to provide that to us every year. If there's another question, um, Al? <laughs> One name, I know. <clears throat> Hello, John. I'm Al oh. Hibner. I live at Welcome. 85 High Ledge Drive. And we know each other. Welcome, Al. Yes, hi. <laughs> uh, a question I have, first of all, I want to say that for two years, we were, I guess we were blessed with uh, pretty amazing prices. So, and I know you don't have a crystal ball and you cannot predict the future. Sure. But with the RG&E variable mix, yep. The components of that that are cheaper, I, I guess, why is that rate so much lower now than the renewable rate sure. that we're currently looking at here with the yep. with the new contract? I guess that's the kind of the question I have. Yeah. So, so the real answer is it, it's pretty simple. Um, maybe not so simple, but but the simple answer is, if you look at whether it be natural gas or electricity in really any given zone, right? you can see the forge curves. So I have a tool that I get from Direct Energy Constellation that shows like your forge curve. So next year, 2024, 2025, versus a day ahead in real time. So what's happening is the forward prices are really high to fix them. But when they settle to the marketplace, if you don't fix it, they're settling really cheap. Last year was an anomaly where, I wouldn't say it's an anomaly, but this is what happened last year. Both the forwards and the market, the, the, the daily markets exploded really, really high. So what you're seeing now is you're seeing a big divergence between letting your energy float on a market-based rate versus fixing it going forward. Now, unfortunately, we can't do a program like this, a CCA program, and let you float. They, they won't allow it. So Department of Public Service won't do it. I have some commercial industrial aggregations in New Jersey where I did like a 50% fixed price and the rest is on a variable market-based rate. It's, we're killing it. Like the, the market-based rate is like less than half of what the forward prices are. So there's your answer. But that's not, gonna, that's not gonna persist forever, right? At some point, your daily market prices are gonna explode and catch up with the forwards market. So I think what's happening is because there's so much gas in the ground, because last year was so warm, that's not gonna persist. Another thing that's gonna happen in the future, and this is really just through really good sound fundamentals for multiple suppliers and just having been in the business, is all of these new technologies, wind, solar, that are coming online, 24, 25, 26, they're not reliable, right? They're not gonna be there during the peak periods of the day. So what's gonna end up happening is you're gonna have super high price, peak price periods because of assets that can't come online, right? So what, what, what we're doing as an industry, right, in the United States and, and, uh, and abroad, is we're, we're moving away from coal, we're moving away from nuclear, and we're going into more of these alternative technologies, which will put price constraints on the market in general, right? Because it's a reliability issue moving forward. And we're getting there. We're at that point right now where we're at the precipice, right, that inflection point where you're going to see more demand than we have supply during peak periods. And that's going to change the dynamic in the marketplace big time. So going from a, a lower cost right, right. with our prior program, which we benefited from, and I was one of the 11 on the 100 yeah. uh, percent, this is a bit of a shock, obviously. So yeah. really, people are going to have to decide to go in and out based on right. what the current trailing sure. our genie variable average rate is, yep. which by my calculation for the first 21 months of the program was 6.4 cents, which meant that we had good savings. Our core programs were beating, yeah. pretty much beating the with variable the green, supply with, rate. With the 50% so, renewable component, yeah. Barring a black swan event like Ukraine war, right. which raised natural mm -hmm. gas prices, uh, we're gonna pay a premium is what it sounds like for a while for sure. 
green energy and renewable yeah. energy. Okay. Yeah, and, and you hit it right on the head, Al, is, you know, it's really incumbent on us, uh, upon us and energy as the administrator to make sure that we provide relevant and timely information on the websites, right. you know, our outreach and communication skills to make sure that, you know, folks know that, you know, maybe now's not the time. We're not going to send a notice out that says you should opt out, but the information will be prevalent on the website okay. to give you enough competitive intelligence, right, to make an educated decision. Um, and, and again, that's the beauty of these programs is a lot of folks early on will be like, well, you know, I don't like the government telling me what I should do, right, through an opt-out program. But it's just another option, right? So it's a free option that you have in the marketplace, as long as you don't fall asleep at the wheel. Oh, no, I won't fall asleep. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, at this time, I'll take a question from YouTube. Um, the resident, Melissa, asked, how much difference was the 50% versus the 100% green program? Um, and she said, we saved 150 for taking the 50% versus 100. I'll correct that real quick. The $150 per dollar on average savings was if you were part of the 50% program sure. versus being part of RG&E's regular mix or base mix. Yep. The difference between the 50% program and the 100% program was a little more than a cent per kilowatt hour. Um, and I don't actually have what the savings was for being part of that program. It was pretty pretty close um, to, to what the RG&E um, average rate was. Yeah. Um, so answering that question at this time, if there's another person in person with a question, we can take that. Sure, come on up. Hello, Jim Mathers. Jim, how are you, sir? <laughs> Good um, to see you. I hear the rate increase and I th <clears throat> excuse me so it <clears throat> generated a lot of interest yep. tonight and you know I get it's like 50 percent behind the one year trailing right. um, RG&E uh, variable rate and it's quite an increase yes and I'll have to think about it I heard this rationale yeah you're in the business you you set the <laughs> rates the one I even back in 20 2021 I wondered about uh, what are the arrangements for exactly having a two-year fixed program can we have a one-year fixed program can we have a six-month fixed rate program can, why does it have to go out to two sure. years yeah so take it, that. it's a great question um, the reality of it is there was really very little price differential between one two three years right so we couldn't really find a sweet spot like 17 months Sometimes we'll like play with the months, 22 months, to find a lower price. Between zero and say 36 months, there was very little differential between the price points. So 24 months just became that optimal point to say, okay, that seems to be a point that's a little bit lower than a 12, maybe a little bit lower than the 36, but not much. I mean, literally the differential between the term prices were nominal. And to be clear, yeah. what John is saying is also that that was considered Oh, and yeah. looked at in this process of renewing the, con the program. Yeah, so we, we looked at 12, 24, 36, and then every sweet spot, what we call sweet spot, meaning the suppliers come back and they tell us the best price that we can get you is 17 months or 31 months, right? The best price point was really 24. That's what we came back with. So it is possible to do a shorter term program. It just was not the optimal action for the town with price points. Yeah, but again, keep in mind, it's 24 a month, but for each resident, it could be no months. You can opt out, right? So it could be one month, you come back, you go out. So you have the flexibility between zero months and 24, right? You can stay in for the whole 24 months, but you can get in and out as you see fit based on the information and the market intelligence that we help provide. Right? And of course, the only, you, you're, really, you're really the boots on the ground, right? You get your bill and you see it, right? Because you were helpful the first go around in correcting some stuff that we had uh, going on. And you look at your bill and you say, oh, well, that's really not great, this program rate versus what I'm seeing from RG&E. I'll maybe just stay out of the program right now. So it's really up to you. All right. Okay. I, I hear what you're saying about the sure. optimum place, but it still surprised me that I could bail up maybe for six months, see what winter brings. Yeah. And then... <laughs> oh, I, I, hear, I hear what you're saying. In other words, you're, you're suggesting that maybe if we didn't hedge, the market might come back down, um, right? And we wait a little bit to see where the market's going to go. I think there's really strong pressure on the latter uh, uh, terms, right? Like 2025, 2026. So this is a little bit more of a technical term. So 
over a longer period of time, say 10 years, we've been in what we call a backward dated market, meaning near-term prices are higher than long-term prices. We're in the opposite market now, contango. Near-term prices are lower than long-term prices. Mm -hmm. So the further you go out, the more expensive it becomes. Right, and you're covering that now. Right, but, but it's as you approach those months. So because of the daily markets, right? So as you get to like say December start 23, you'll see the prices start coming down. But if you were to price that out a year ago, that's not the case, right? Mm -hmm. So as you get closer to what we call the prompt month, I say, for instance, what are we, September? October is now the prompt month. Prompt month is going low, but all the other months are staying high. And that's just the phenomenon that we're seeing. That will change. I mean, that last year was entirely opposite, right? Last year was like really high and then low long term. Mm -hmm. So the market has shifted in a different direction. So, mm -hmm. and things change, right? And so it's like the weather. If you don't like the weather down in Florida, wait five minutes and it'll be different. That's kind of where the market's at today. And with that, the town also needed to consider how often we're doing these meetings and sending residents these letters and changing, potentially changing their service and doing that every six months does end up costing more for the town because it's, it's staffing and it's the town attorney working and those types of things, but also it's affecting residents more often and changing something for them more often. Mm -hmm. And that can often cause confusion and we don't, we don't want to add to that. So but between the rate and then the other considerations, a two year is kind of an optimal term for the town as well. Yeah, and again, without a crystal ball, I mean, I think the advice that we would, we would give or gave was we think longer term, price, there's going to be upward pressure on prices. Prices are going to continue to go up longer term. And that's really why well, sure. we kind of bank. We don't know how much. We don't that's know. This we is, don't know. <laughs> but, but, a but, crystal ball to a customer. Right. You stick around or I will give you the credit yeah. that you can opt in and opt out. Yeah. So as long as that's there. That was yep. very important um, to the town board. That is. Yeah. It and and it, it's mandated, decision. by the way, by the, the Department of Public Service anyway. So. Right. Yeah. And along that line, just one other. Uh, how many people were contacted to bid on this contract? As I understand, there's only like four in sure. the whole state and only so two are probably viable. So do you mean for the program administrator or for the energy supplier? For the energy supplier. So for this, ter this term, it was two. Previously, we had, for the original term, four. I think we had four. Yeah. That, yeah. that applied. It was like, done. Offer. Yeah. Okay. And yep. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take another question from the audience here, if there is one. Um, I'll get the lady on the end. You can pull it out here. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll just pull it. Hi, Marianne Hi. Marino. Um, if you post, or when will you post the rate for our first December bill? I guess it'll go on in December. Um, mm -hmm. And the comparative to our G and E. Will sure. that be in November? Yeah, so we'll post, we'll post every single month in the first few days of the month. So you'll see an update in um, October, first week, then November again, and then December. So you should probably look towards like the October and November updates to draw, you know, kind of, uh, you know, your math. All right, and then you can opt out at that point if you, you, can. If you choose to. Yep. Okay, yep. and if yep. you opt back in or opt back out, however you do it, Mm -hmm. We won't do this postcard every time. It'll be online that you'll yep. do it. Okay. Absolutely. Or you can, well, I won't go back, but you can go, to, you can call. Right. You can call the uh, administrator number, which is the good energy number. You can call Constellations number, or you can do it on the website. I'd say the cleanest way to do it is on the website. Right. There's a very simple form you can fill out, and that form actually goes to Constellation, and we get copied on it. So we have, okay. you know, we have a record of it. You had posted an, a phone number for I guess it's Constellation, will mm -hmm. that come on the opt-out letter? It will. Okay. Yep. Right. Absolutely. And, Thank you. And just so you, everyone is aware, if you opt in or out of the program after the renewal has started, it's about a 15-day turnover. So if your billing is within that 15 days, it may take another bill yeah. to show up. Right. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, the, the switching rules in New York are five days. But if it's timed like awkwardly, it, it, it has yeah. been sometimes. Yeah, it, you, you can end up having a whole nother 30 days. You, you might miss it. So, but generally speaking, it takes about two weeks. I believe the gentleman on the end. Oh, okay. Yeah. Great. <laughs> yep. um, are there any other questions in this room? Seeing none at the, this time, I'll check online once more. 
It looks like we've completed the questions at this time and we'll close this meeting. Thank you. Thank you.